Good morning. This is our fourth video looking at Song of Songs or the Solomon's Song of Songs. We're going to be looking at chapter 2 verses 8 through 17. Uh, it is Wednesday the 14th of July. Next week I'll be off for vacation. But let's get to it. I'm going to read again from this commentary. There you have it. And we will use the translation as he has it. Verse, chapter 2, verse 8. This is the Shulamite woman speaking. Listen, my lover, look, he is coming, leaping over the mountains, springing over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a heart of the deer. Look, he is standing behind, behind our wall, gazing from the windows, peering from the lattices. My lover spoke up and said to me, and now this is Solomon speaking, Arise, my friend, my beauty, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rain has passed, gone away. The blossoms have appeared in the land. The time of pruning, the time of singing has arrived. And the call of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree has ripened its fruits, and the vines are in blossom. They give off fragrance. Arise, my friend, my beauty, and come. My dove in the clefts of the cliff, in a hiding place in the precipice, let me see your appearance. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is pleasant, and your appearance is comely. He or she says, or maybe they say together, catch for us foxes, little foxes that are ruining vineyards, and our vineyards are in blossom. And now she speaks, the Shulamite woman. My lover is mine and I am his, he who browses among the lilies until the day blows and the shadows flee. Turn, be my lover like a gazelle or a heart of the deer on the cleft mountains. All right, returning back to the beginning. Now the previous verses talked about not arousing love too early, that there is a proper time and a place for marriage to happen, a proper time and a place for the consummation of the marriage to happen, a proper time and place for Christ to come and be our Savior, a proper time and place for him to bring us home to rest and dwell with him. And so in chapter 2, verse 8, the lady, either the Shulamite woman when we're talking in respect to Solomon, or the church when we're talking in respect to Jesus, is listening. My son Luke has an amazing ability to hear. The car comes home, and no matter what he's doing, he knows immediately. He says, Mommy's home! Or perhaps he says, Daddy's home, but I'm not there. But he knows. He can hear it. He hears it in a distance, or he hears something outside. And he says that someone's coming. Well, the Shulamite woman is listening because her lover is coming. And he's an agile lover, so maybe he's not a huge noisy beast. No, he's, but he's coming. And, and because she's paying attention... She knows that he's coming for her, right? When my uh, daughter, who's about to be married, when she knows that her fiancé is coming, she listens for him. And when she hears, she gets excited and comes to the door. So that's kind of the, the case here. Listen, my lover. Listen, church. Jesus is coming. It is interesting that Jesus calls us by the word, by the gospel, but it comes in through our ears. The sacrament of baptism, it's water and the word spoken. In communion, it's his body and blood and the bread and the wine. The words spoken, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Here, she's listening. The lover's coming. Solomon's coming. Christ is coming. So let's get excited. Look, he is coming. So now that you hear, what do you do? Well, in my house, we go to the window and we check. Oh, there's the car. Or we open the door and we check. Oh, they're home. Here, we look. My daughter waiting for her fiancé, the Shulamite woman, waiting for the king, Solomon, to come. And the church, we look to his word, to his, his scripture. We look to the songs that we sing and the sermons that we hear. We look to the Bible studies that we do. We look because he's coming. 
leaping over the mountains, springing over the hills. So this isn't uh, slow. This is with alacrity, agility. He is eager and determined. He wants to be there with his fiance so he can marry her. He wants to come home to his wife when I'm off on trips. I always want to get back. I want to come home to be with my wife. It was good to get and do the things I needed to do, but now I get to come home. I get to be with the woman that I love. Christ seeks us out the same way, the shepherd who seeks the lost sheep. He doesn't do it kind of lazily and uh, grumpily. Uh, no, he comes and he leaps. He's agile. He comes quickly. And in his coming, it's a beautiful thing. The fiance, when, when Solomon comes for his wife, it's a beautiful thing. She sees his grace and she loves to see him coming for her, coming to be her husband. The church, when we see Christ, how he came at Christmas, how he died for us and rose again to come to save us, it is a beautiful, it is an energetic and lively thing. My lover is like a gazelle or a heart of the deer. So we have then a, a simile uh, compared to a deer. This is a simile which shows up a lot in the Song of Songs um, in a number of different ways, a number of different places. But it's not a bear. It's not some grouchy. No, this is a beautiful jumping, hopefully not getting in front of your car, <laughs> a beautiful jumping deer, right? Look! He is standing behind our wall, gazing from the windows, peering from the lattices. Our wall here is probably the wall of her family. Molly is waiting eagerly for the day when she will be married, but she can go out from our walls and be in with the walls of her husband. They two will be one, and they will be a new household, a new family. And she should be. And he, the one, he's looking in eagerly at us. He's looking, Solomon's looking eagerly at his, his fiance, his wife. If uh, in the later, when he's married and it talks in similar ways, Christ is doing the same. He's, he's going out and seeking after those who are lost, and then he's, looking in eagerly, trying to find them. He wants to take them away from their sin, from the world, to take them to be with him. Beautiful image here. My lover spoke up and said to me. So here's the voice of Solomon, the voice of Jesus. Come in this eager and quick way to take away from, from, from where we're entrapped, to be with him in paradise. Arise, my friend, my beauty. Again, my friend emphasizes equality. Beauty emphasizes how he views us. So they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Husband should look upon his wife and see her as beautiful. Some studies have shown that husbands of many years still see the wife whom they married. She originally was. Certainly they can recognize cognitively that age has happened and those sorts of things, but it's not how they view her. They view her as that original, wonderful, glorious, vibrant beauty. And we as spouses should attempt to view our spouses that way. We should remind ourselves of their beauty. Christ looks at the church that way. He put that beauty upon us. In the sacraments, he gave us the forgiveness of sins. He made us God's children. And now he views us with the glory that he has imputed to us. So he speaks this way and he says, Arise and come. Come away from your entrapment. Come away from this place that you lived. Now come dwell with me in paradise. And why should you come now? Because it's the right time. It's the right time for the arousal of love. It's the right time for the marriage to happen. It's the right time for the family to begin. For see, the winter is past. It's spring. It's a time of life. The rain has passed, gone away. There's a section of scripture where, where Jesus says, as a, there's an argument about whether they should have kept a, a, a jar of very precious perfume. And Jesus says, 
Um, celebrate when the bridegroom is with you. The poor will be with you always, but celebrate when the bridegroom is with you. So the rain has passed. The winter has passed. They're gone away. It's time, because I am here, I am with you. It is time to set aside the darkness of the sin. It is time to be in our marriage. Solomon, it's time to stop being in your poor and your, your, your bad situation. It's time to come and be in my princely situation with me. It's spring. It's when life begins. The blossoms have appeared in the land. The time of pruning, the time of song has arrived. Okay? I think that image continues the theme pretty well. And the call of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The turtle dove is a dove that's gentle, beautiful, fragile, it needs protection. Solomon hears the call of his turtle dove. He's compared her before to this, the Shulamite woman. He hears her call. He wants to take her in and he wants to cherish her and love her and keep her safe with him. And she's crying. She's singing. It's not crying in the bad sense, but crying out. She's singing the time of song. She's singing because this is the joyous time when she gets to be married. This is the day of excitement and, and, and wonder. Jesus has come to save his church. This is the parousia, the time of resurrection. Jesus came in baptism. This is the time to sing and joy, and we always do. And you can run through these things. Beautiful image. The fig tree has ripened its fruits and the vines are in blossom. So in the previous couple of passages, uh, back in like six or seven, it talks about the fruits and, and the figs and, and, and all these things which are so beautiful to eat and so luscious and filling. And she's sick with love and waiting for that joy. Well, it's all ready now. You could be, well, I will satisfy your sickness. I will fulfill your need because the time is good. Because we have come together at the proper time. They give off fragrance. They fill the air with the beautiful smells. They take away all the foulness. Now is the time of life. He again repeats, Arise, my friend, my beauty, and come. Don't stay in your doldrums and your sleep. Don't stay in your graves. Because Jesus has come. My dove in the cliffs of the in the clefts of the cliff in a hiding place in the precipice. Now remember earlier she's describing him as looking through the lattices, looking through the window, trying to find her. Now he's saying, that's where you are. You're hidden there. You're hidden in what you think is safety. Or if we advance to the church today, you are in safety. You are in the, the cleft of Jesus Christ, protected from harm. Now Jesus has come again, and it's time to come out. You don't have to worry about sin and strife, because Jesus is here. And his dove, this gentle, beautiful bird that sings with him, can come out and live with him and enjoy all of nature and enjoy the rejuvenation, the life that God has recreated, the paradise that he has brought once again. In marriage... You take your wife into your house, and you protect her. You watch over her. You cherish her. She's safe now. She has her spouse, and you're safe now because you have your spouse. And when the world tears down at you, there's her with her love. So you come together, protect her and protected, strengthen her and encouraged, you come together in this beautiful marriage. He goes on, let me see your appearance. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant, but your appearance is comely. For you fill me with delight in all that I hear and all that I see. For you are a joy to me. And isn't that wonderful in marriage when that's true? That's how it should be. That's how God made it to be. And it's wonderful in the church. God looks down upon the church he has created, 
And he says, it's beautiful. Its songs and its prayers are beautiful to my ears. Its actions are beautiful to my eyes. Now, it says he, she here, which is interesting. It uses a plural. It could refer to Solomon or it could refer to the Shulamite woman. Some people think it refers to the daughters of Zion, but that does not seem probable. What is very apparent is what it's saying here. Catch for us foxes, little foxes that are ruining vineyards, and our vineyards are in blossom. So, sometimes there's a problem in your crop. Problem with, with what's supposed to be producing good life. The problem is foxes. Most famously in the Bible, uh, you see, um, I was about to say Solomon, that's all right. You see Samson catches 300 foxes, I believe, ties their tails together, and then he lets them loose in the vineyards of the Philistines. And uh, he had attached torches to their tails, and they dragged them through all the crops as they're about to be harvested, and they cause a great fire which destroys uh, the wheat and the vines and the orchards. But in all of Israel, not, you know, not even in that special case, there are foxes, and they get in the vineyards, and they eat some of the fruits, and they dig at the plants, and they cause destruction. In marriage, there are times when we get angry with one another. When we have our little foibles, better known as sins, because they are sins that lead to death. We have things which tear at our marriage. Now, it can be other people, if you want. They could be foxes hunting us. But more likely here, it's just those, those little things which tick off and annoy the one that you love. Maybe you're not putting your clothes in the hamper, guys, and your wife gets a little upset at that because it's not hard. It's just a small action which demonstrates that you love and serve her, but it, it annoys you. Or maybe one of you is, is a stickler for promptness, and one of you isn't quite so on time, and this kind of gets under your skin, and it grinds away. These are the foxes, the little foxes that are loose in the vineyard, in this beautiful thing, in this beautiful growth of life. It says, hunt them down. Now, how do you hunt them down? You hunt them down by repentance and forgiveness. You hunt them down by realizing your sin and going to God's word to find a way to do better. You hunt them down by communicating with your spouse and saying, hey, this annoys me, or, oh, I'm sorry, I will try to change that behavior. You hunt them down in the church by turning to Jesus and keeping your eyes on him. You hunt them down in your marriage by looking to your spouse and remembering how wonderful they are and that they are much more valuable than these little things that you want to hold on to, these little foxes that you think are cute but really are destructive and vile. And so here it says, just a little warning, in the midst of our glorious new life, to make sure we get rid of the things which could cause it to lose its, its source, its feeding, and cause it to die. All right, moving to the final two verses. This time the Shulamite woman is speaking. My lover is mine, and I am his. Ownership. The Shulamite woman owns the king. And the king owns the Shulamite woman. They're slaves. They are slaves one to the other, and vice versa. They are to serve and sacrifice for the other, each one giving to the other their love and cherishing the other person according to their abilities and their skills. So Christ is the churches. We own him because he chose to put himself as a slave to us. He chose to wash the disciples' feet. So we have properly crosses on our churches proclaiming that Jesus was enslaved to us. He died for us, for our sin. 
He rose for us. He gave to us life. But likewise, we're Jesus's now. Right? He has given us tasks. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. For lo, I am with you always to the end of the ages. Look, we've been given a task. Right? We're supposed to raise our children in Christ and make them his little lambs. We're supposed to stay in his word and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We are Jesus's. We are little Christ, little Jesus's, who go throughout the world sharing his love, and, and he uses them to bring others into his church. Very cool. My lover is mine, and I am his. He who browses among the lilies, he who goes out among the flowers, and then found her as the lily of the valley, his beautiful lily among all the other lilies, found her as his delight. Until the day blows and the shadows flee, turn. Be my lover like a gazelle or a heart of the deer on the cleft mountains. Until the day blows and the shadows flee, until the end of time, until it's all done, continue to be that man who leaps like a deer. And here this, this deer is leaping across stones and rocks, an amazing mountain deer, who leaps to get me, to find me among the lilies and take me back to dwell with him. Who takes me from the cleft mountain, like the turtle dove hiding from the storm, and takes me to where I can live in the sun and the light and the fragrance of the beautiful food. Who takes me to dwell in paradise. So Solomon takes the Shulamite woman to be his queen. Christ takes us, the church, to be his bride. And he does it time and time again with the same eagerness, the same joy, the same seeking after as the first time, until he comes again and, and time is no more. We will close there. Um, I'll see you not next week, but the week after.